All right, so we're doing another U quiz. Hopefully this shouldn't be too long after the first. It should be like closer between the various videos now. And today we're doing what type of zoo enclosure should you be kept in by Gutter Bagel. Let's uh, get into it. And question one is what kind of creature are you? The first option is fungus. I mean, let's just say I have been part fungus at times, if you know what I mean. I mean, I think we all have at some point or another. The second option is I contain multitudes, but I'm physically an Aquarius. I'm an Aquarium in that I got a lot of fish in me. Third option is reptile, which let's just say I've been part reptile at times. I think this option is meant more for like, you know, the queen. It's a stupid joke. The fourth option is human boring, which Humans are boring, you know, that's why I don't talk to them and not because I'm just a complete shut-in and socially kind of a mess. The fifth option is human but like Aragorn, I have a destiny. And I don't know if this is referring to like in the universe of the quiz or in real life. Like this seems to be one of those quizzes where there's like, you are meant to kind of, for lack of a better term, roleplay a bit when you're taking the quiz. And so, like, in-universe, my destiny is, like, being in a zoo, apparently, given the nature of the quiz. In real life, I guess if you make bad YouTube videos, so, you know, could apply either case. The sixth option is non-fungible, basically means you're a parasite on society. Like, I feel this is kind of, like, the opposite of fungus also, in a way, if you know what I mean. Like, if you're immune to fungus, you're non-fungible. That's what the word would mean in, like, a just society. And, like, if the universe was good, that's what non-fungible would mean. Second last option is vampire. And, you know, there's, like, a thin line between being a vampire and being a uh, goth. I am, in real life, neither. But I prefer dark clothes because I have a good fashion sense. And by that, I mean I have no fashion sense. And so a lot of my friends seemed to think I was like goth or at least adjacent because of that. To be fair though, they also thought I was a vampire, so there is that. The last option is Kinney. I know of Kinney, I don't really understand fully what it is, but you know, I mean, it's one of those things I think it's not hurting anyone. You might as well just respect other people's lives, you know? So I don't want to make any like weird insulting jokes. If you vibe with that kind of thing, good for you. I don't, but doesn't mean no one can, you know? And we gotta choose our option here. I think my aquarium joke slapped, so we're going for that. Second question is what element is your zodiac sign? And then they have the 12 zodiac signs with their elements. I don't know how the elements are assigned to each zodiac, but um, the thing is, I don't really know how to come up with jokes for the Zodiac, things like this. I don't really want to reveal my birth date either. Thankfully, they have, like, cheap outs here. And the joke here is, why wasn't Scorpio first? Which, I guess the joke is Scorpios are selfish. To imply one in every 12 people was, like, selfish. Which, I mean, to be fair, the number's probably higher, but... We're gonna go with, um, that just to, like, have our out for these kind of questions. And similarly, question three is what quality is your zodiac sign? Mine, of course, is high quality. I didn't even think about it. They have that joke in here. It's like 1080p. Nice thing when they come up with the sarcastic answers, I don't really have to do any of the work here for these kind of questions. Makes my, makes my life a little easier. Question four is choose a fursona. First option is I already have so many. I mean, I don't really know how personas work, but wouldn't that be like dissociative identity disorder or something adjacent? Because I thought you were supposed to like be your persona. So like, I don't n know what would be it. So like, I, it's not like having an original character. It's like you would be them, I think. I don't know what I'm talking about. I don't know how it works, but you know what I'm getting at. The second option is dolphin, which if I recall correctly from like high school biology, I guess. Don't dolphins do a lot of, like, weird stuff in the wild, like, in a bad way? I don't know if I'd want to be, like, associated with that. The third option is Undead Wolf with an Edgelord name. Now, you're probably looking at my channel name and thinking I am a furry and I am this kind of furry. 
my channel name is a song reference. I this is not who I am as a person, you know. Listen to Inertiatic ESP by the Mars Volta. Don't um listen to the furries, you know. At least in this case. I know a lot of them are professional, like doctors and software engineers. You listen to them in that case, but not now. Fourth option is Rainbow Shrimp. Big fan of Pride. Um I know it's a reference to the whole uh, shrimp colors thing, but if that's what you go for, you would have to be, like, small, and I don't think that's worth the trade-off, you know? I'm pretty tall in real life, I value that more than seeing some, like, extraneous colors. I get by with what I can see. Fifth option is Garfield. You know, there's a lot of, like, Garfield-scented irony on the internet. I think it's kind of, like, oversaturated at this point. I always try to kind of like dodge it when I can. Our next option, the second last option is Hyena. Which, I mean, you know, I'm always very close to laughing. To be honest though, hyenas are cool. Like, look up a uh, pseudo penis. That's a pretty cool aesthetic. I would probably go for that if I had to, I think. But I don't, so what are you going to do about it? And the last option is Bat-Fox hybrid with a galaxy aesthetic. Bats and foxes are already weirdly close, so it's kind of hard to find what traits would, like, carry over. Like, how do you even tell them apart? Maybe I don't know what bats look like. I don't know. But I've made my choice. Question five is what would you like from Richmond? First option is Carnage. I don't know if it's referring to like the Marvel character or if I'm like going to be allowed to kill people. I would like the second option. I think Marvel is kind of like overdone at this point. Like just the amount of content versus what it is at this point, I'm kind of jaded. But you know, I wouldn't mind tearing someone apart. Second option is Star Wars Lego set, which I mean, as cool as it is, it's only going to last you so long, especially if it's one of those that's like tailored to creating something specific, like a Star Wars thing. Third option is attention. I know in the onset of COVID, a lot of animals were like lonely, deprived from the human attention, but um, I haven't been, so it's not me. There you go. Fourth option is a gaming PC, which I mean is the obvious choice. It's going to give you the longest time of entertainment. You also kind of get the Lego set with like Minecraft, I know that's a common comparison. That'd be pretty good. The fifth option is a soccer ball full of meat, which I mean aren't all soccer balls full of meat. I know the ones at my school were. I remember at recess we'd all run out and like tear them open and eat the insides. We do that with whatever we could get our hands on though, like we did that with a couple people too, so maybe that was just to satiate our age, you know? How angry were you at your school? Leave it down in the comments below. Third last option is the cage full of bouncy balls from Walmart. Which, I mean, I think those are meant to, like, hold them back. It's meant to, like, restrain the bouncy balls. I don't think having that sort of danger in with your cage, having that sort of danger in with your, like, in your own cage is going to be a very good idea. The second last option is HBO Max and Hulu with no ads. Which, I mean, the fact that you have to have two streaming services on this option, streaming in general is, like, so fragmented nowadays. I don't, like, what would you even be getting? Like, how, what percent of shows would you be getting? Also, like, this is another thing that kind of, like, gets subsumed by the PC. And the last option is six to ten creatures of the same species. Enough to form at least two rival cliques. Based on the earlier question, I don't know if this is assuming I'm an animal or not. Like, would they be the same sort of animal as me, or just the same as each other? It's like, if I'm a human in a circumstance, are there just going to be, like, ten other people in there with me? Because that doesn't sound like a good time. And, yeah, I think overall, I am going to have to rep the gamers on this option. So, shout out to all you guys. Question six is, who's your favorite zookeeper and why? First option is, Sawyer has cool stories and puns. If animals were truly intelligent, puns would enrage them. Like, Sawyer should be dead in this circumstance. That's of course assuming they can understand language in this kind of context. 
because if not, then what good are our stories and plans going to be, you know? Second option is Megan wears a dangly necklace and one of these days I'm gonna grab it. If I haven't been able to grab it so far, isn't that just like, wouldn't that just be taunting? Kind of cruel, right? Like, to experience that sort of, like, separation. You know, if I want to grab your necklace, what's so wrong about that, you know? The third option is TJ shares his weed. I would love to go to a zoo where the animals are all just like smoking weed. I think we have a much like better environment, you know? You hear about animals in zoos breaking out all the time. Like that's not just a rare occurrence to make up for shows. That's like daily in zoos, right? I think this could be like a good solution to that issue. Last option is Bart with the cargo pants full of treats. And you know, I never knew Bart became a zookeeper. I guess it's a stable job enough, you know? Cowabunga, dude. Eat my shorts. Don't have cows. Yeah. Question seven is pick an architectural style. First option is constructivism. I've looked at um, other reference pictures too to see like how accurate these ones are. This, this one, these buildings typically Constructivist buildings typically look like the uh, Teen Titans Tower, which, I mean, well, it sounds cool, but I don't think that would be good to live in. It's like this weird upside down pyramid. It looks like they were trying to build a normal pyramid and they just like messed up. I don't know if I'd want to be associated with that. Second option is mid-century modern, and I don't like how it's like deliberately minimalist, at least on the outside. Like, it looks like the kind of houses that people with more money than personality usually get. At least to me. I don't know what the inside would look like. I mean, that would be a better tone setter than anything else. Third option is brutalism. I don't know why, but I genuinely find brutalist buildings, like, really nice to look at. They just have, like, a good vibe, you know? It reminds me of my days living in Soviet Russia. Fourth option is Tudor Revival. I don't know what a Tudor is, but they say it's Tudor Revival, but does it even have, like, two doors? It looks like a weird, like, bed and breakfast or something, I don't know. The fifth option is Art Deco, which looks like a lot like that film uh, Metropolis, I think it's called, the old one. The old kind of, like, fascist-y movie. Like, I don't know why, but that's kind of just the vibes I get from this building. The sixth option is Romanesque, which given all these, I understand this, I'm guessing this is supposed to be, like, what house you're living in? But, like, these seem to be more, like, castle-y kind of things, which I know it sounds cool to live in a castle, but trying to, like, maintain that, trying to upkeep it, sounds like it would be, um, very not worth it. The seventh option is American Victorian. I don't know exactly what that means, like, I'm not an architecture historian or anything, but it looks to me like the kind of houses they had at, like, plantations in the U.S., and that's really not a good vibe, I don't know. Maybe I'm misunderstanding it, but I'm- that's not what I'm into, I gotta say. And the last option is minimalism, which is kind of like- it's similar as the, um, mid-century modern, just a lot worse. Like, they took what little remnants of soul were left in those buildings and just, like, squeezed it out. So yeah, I'm gonna go with brutalism. The eighth question is, why are you in the zoo? Nice rhyming here. First option is something to do, with which continues on that rhyme nicely. But I mean, being in a place isn't like doing a thing, you know? Like, I've been in a place all my life and haven't been like doing things all my life. I don't know how I'm supposed to continue that metaphor, but you know what I'm saying? Like, being in a zoo in and of itself is not doing a thing. The second option is I'm fascinating, which given my view count, clearly is not true. Third option is educational purposes, which I mean this is what I understand. I'm just like in a zoo studying the animals or whatever, like to be a zoologist, which am I not in a cage then? Or am I like, I guess I could be the um, exhibition for the education. I don't know what you'd learn from like studying me though. Nothing great. Fourth option is lowest rent in the city, which, um, I mean, you have to pay to be in a zoo. Like, are the animals are all paying for their spots? Fifth option is study abroad, which I think this one would be worth it as, like, a trade-off to me. 
because I would genuinely love to, like, experience other cultures. And, I mean, I guess you get, like, an animal's point of view staying in a zoo, which at the very least would be exclusive, I guess. Third last option is I'm dangerous, which doesn't really make sense because I am dangerous in real life. I'm not in a zoo. Maybe I am in a zoo, depending on how you want to define it. The second last option is tax purposes, which, I mean, this sounds like something you would do if you were, like, rich. Like, if you could qualify yourself as an animal and then not have to pay any taxes. A lot of really rich people would be doing that kind of stuff. And the last option is lured here with a trail of Sour Patch Kids. Does the whole, like, cartoon trail of food thing work? I haven't even really seen it in cartoons all that much, aside from, like, really old ones. I guess that tells you that, like, the evolutionary strategy of cartoon animals has kind of evolved past that point. But I mean, my genuine answer here, gotta go uh, study abroad. Okay, alright, alrighty, I gotta talk about this one. So this is kind of a feature they have on these quizzes now. We can put like a short time limit to like just a few seconds on questions. So for the next option, I'm not going to be able to like explain myself. I am decided for some reason to go for kind of a naturalistic approach to these quizzes. So I'm just going to read off all the options quick and we'll just go for one. I'll try to give what explanation I can afterwards, but we are going to have to kind of crunch it here. I mean, I don't understand how this choice is going to affect your animal though. Alright, question 10, you ready? Question 10 is... Hand. We got hide, nice, smack, and bite. I'm going for nice. I don't know if I got it or not, because it... I hit the time limit, but I had a choice picked, so I don't know if I got it or not. I don't know if it'll affect what I get. I guess we won't have a way of, like, knowing. And the last option is leave something to throw into the crocodile pond. I'm gonna put, um... I want to live in a reverse zoo where a bunch of animals pay money to look at humans. I don't know, that's, that's what I got to go with. Let's see what we get. I got a touch tank. I guess that's a tank where you can like touch the animals. That's what it seems like from the picture. And the right up is... I feel like these are controversial, but I actually don't know. Anyways, you've got a nice low sandy tank, and people can reach in and touch you anytime they want. If you're about that, then nice, lots of pets. If not, you'll get really good at hiding. Free access to bite anyone you want to. So you just reach right in there and you get to be on the news. You can also make an argument that this teaches valuable lessons like conservation, or that wild animals are safe to pet. Second highest, um... Probably not that bad of an option, comparing all of these. Like, being in a show would suck a lot. And I'm not actually that big of a fan of the idea of, like, a treehouse. So maybe I got a good option. As always, five stars. Um, yeah.